Hey everyone, welcome back to another creator interview. I'm your host, Zach, with World of Game Design and Geeks Can't. I'm joined today by returning guest, Nick Ribera. Nick, how you doing? Hey, Zach. I'm excited to be on the show again. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you're already decked out in it, but we're here to talk about a Morkborg thing uh, yeah. <laughs> today. Very different than what, you you know, you and I talked about mm -hmm with your previous stuff, right? All those, those print, yeah. you know, those deck, like single evening session mm -hmm. role-playing games that you've done before, which are awesome. But now you're stepping into the Morkborg waters. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, I work pretty quickly. Um, so uh, I, I was um, actually just last night checking my Amazon uh, order history and I bought the Morkborg book may of last year mm. and uh i was so enamored by it that i'm like okay i gotta write something for this so um it's been uh i guess less than a year since i had this whole thing put together uh but kind of my idea first was i want to start off with just a simple compendium just like some random monsters magic items whatever just put that into a book and i was looking at some of my older illustrations i'm like okay i had some things for like the the horror based oracle deck i made and some things from my uh erotic tarot deck that would have worked so i just kind of started by re retweaking those illustrations um and then i figured why just stop at a compendium why not just create a storyline that ties everything together um so i ended up kind of deciding to make a book that is presented as a compendium but does have a guide on how a gm can go from page to page location to location npc to npc treasure to treasure etc so the book kind of works in both ways and the book is called pilgrimage of the penitent um, yeah yeah which is delightful and and like um it's interesting you and i had a very similar journey in our morkborg in our initial morkborg phase which is <laughs> Didn't really get the setting, then picked up the book, then eventually read the book and immediately was like, I got to create something for this, right? Like, it's cool. Yes. I want to yeah. do it. And also just like me, <laughs> like <laughs> you said, I'm going to start small and then didn't, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love that, right? Like, uh, it's something, we, one thing that we found with the Morkborg system, right, is mm -hmm. that it's inspiring. Um, that. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to design for, and it gets the creative juices flowing, and there's enough weird, unique, fascinating things mm -hmm. in that core book that really, it's not just about telling interesting stories, though that's definitely a part of it, but it also allows you this like really fun sandbox mm -hmm. for mechanics and ideas that maybe wouldn't fit as easily in other systems. Morkborg embraces mm -hmm. that a little bit more, I think. Um, and I think, yeah, but... yeah go ahead. <laughs> Uh, what what really caught my attention about the initial book was just the 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 graphic design of the pages. Um, how like you know all the rules of graphic design are thrown out the window where you know don't have more than two fonts on a page, uh, make sure everything's legible. And uh, I've I've like spent so many years of my design career learning all those things and getting comfortable within those rule set. I just got excited about the challenge of trying to create a book that fits within that style and i i still have to wrap my head around it like uh, logistically on getting this thing built and set up rules for my own self but um it was just so fun kind of coming up with a product that fits artistically within that that thing yeah it's it's we talked about this with another creator that we that had a mork work project but um it's harder than you think to <laughs> like hard. fit within the Morkborg style because you say all the design tried and trues are out 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 the window, right? But the reality is that because you throw them out the window, you need to have a very good eye for what needs to remain and and yeah. what how something's gonna still work and look great and and be awesome for the for the end user like just throwing everything out the window and not having the design know-how to still make it look good is a recipe mm -hmm. for a rough ride um <laughs> so but you've got that right like you've yeah. been doing design yeah. for a long time yeah yeah well, well what's funny about that is like i, I got i finally <laughs> uh like before this project i'd finally gotten the 
the the system down of writing my storylines or writing whatever project I'm working on in Google Docs and then having that dynamically import into Adobe InDesign so that everything is formatted exactly as I need it. But you can't do that with Morkborg. Yeah. So instead, I, I wrote everything in Google Docs as usual, uh, color-coded everything to keep track of what's a skill, what's narration, blah, 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 blah. And then I had to bring everything as individual blocks of text into Adobe Illustrator. So that's where I designed all of the pages that are in the book. And then from Illustrator, I exported those as uh, transparent images into Clip Studio Paint, which is my drawing software. And there I drew on top of the pages and warped everything and added all the effects. So anytime I do need, if I found a typo, I'd have to go like five softwares <laughs> back, fix the typo and re-export everything along the line to get back to my, my book. Yeah, someone said once that like every page in Morkborg is like a band poster, right? Like its yeah. own thing, like... <laughs> it's its own art piece and you it, mm -hmm. it doesn't help like your book doesn't become like some books become like designing a 40 page book as regards to a mm -hmm. 150 page book not really that much work because once you have the template it's kind of repeating pages and dropping in art and you're good to go mm -hmm. that is not the case with a quality Morkborg product like where every two page spread is a new design mm -hmm. uh, it's it, 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 it's a new um it's a new like uh 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 piece of paper it's a new it's a new uh graph it's a new space that you have to completely like rethink of but still think about how it ties into the pages <laughs> that come before it and after yeah so ah, it's well, it, well it's funny to extend, expand on that like you like you said you look at a spread you look at a page and it's beautiful all is one but then when you look at the individual drawings probably not more than 20 minutes spent on each one it's not you know you're not looking at magic the gathering art on yeah. those yeah <laughs> so that also became a challenge because I, I usually spend so much time over thinking each illustration i put into a project i had to really simplify some of these like i, I would get really in depth and then i would start scratching it up to kind of remove details from my illustrations to get it to fit within there oh my gosh i love that idea like um Morkborg has, has always been about recycling things right and you talked about mm -hmm. uh re retweaking or pulling in art that you've used mm -hmm. from other things Morkborg's always done that even the core book has you know public domain mm -hmm. art that they have that they pulled in and then redefined reused recycled upcycled mm -hmm. sometimes right to get the desired effect um I love the idea that you you had these board games and tarot decks elsewhere mm -hmm. and you're like I've got great illustrations over there <laughs> that with some mm -hmm. refinement on style yeah, can be dropped in here and they work awesome. Like that feels perfect to me. Um, yeah, and and also kind of to quickly add to that yeah. too, uh, the way I work as an illustrator generally, every project I do is completely different art style. Um, but because I wasn't supposed to have a consistent art style with this one project, I'm really all over the place, and I kind of like that. So like I, I have one uh, one disease that I came up with that's illustrated like a watercolor painting. I have one that looks like a medieval. Um, uh, diagram of the internal organs and I've got one that's like a scratchy oil or woodblock paint kind of all over the place and I, I, it was a really fun challenge doing completely different things on every page mm. and let's get into that a little bit so we've been talking about the design let's talk a little bit about the other side of that which is the writing and what the okay. content looks like in here so one thing that I know uh, having looked it over and whatnot um, you've got a new character sheet you've got an ailment system so this is uh, talk to us about what 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 is pilgrimage of the penitent as a yeah. as a supplement and what are you introducing to the game sure so um the the storyline i came up with was kind of like a uh like if you really were in the dark ages and everyone agrees the world is ending what would be your first steps? Would you try to have fun because it's all going to end? Or if you believe in the afterlife, are you going to do your best to set yourself up for success in the afterlife? So I figured, what if I created this pilgrimage that these characters go on to try and seek atonement for their sins so that when the world does end, they can feel happy going into it, knowing that they're going to find someplace better. Not anything I believe, but um, I thought it was a really fun setting for characters who would believe that. I love that in like the the darkest of dark RPGs, you're like, actually, what about what if we really thought about how good the afterlife could be? Like that's that's <laughs> the way we're gonna go here. Like, dude, yeah, yeah, no, atonement is gonna be the big the big concept mm -hmm. here. I love that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
so yeah, I, I came up with NPCs you'd find along the way, locations you'd visit. Um, and then uh, the new thing I came up with for this, uh, I call them ailments. They're kind of diseases you can catch, but they're not necessarily always bad. But from a gameplay standpoint, I designed it so that the GM will kind of, uh, the, each disease has a way that it'll manifest itself over the next few days. And so the GM will just give little bits of information to their players, like they wake up and now this is happening to them. And at a certain point, the ailment lets uh, the GM know when they can uh, show it to the player so they know that they've caught something. Um, mm. So just an example of one I came up with, which I thought would be a really fun uh, drama to add to your party. I call it Sangue Dulce, uh, which is Latin for sweet blood. And uh, the uh, on day one, um, your character's body odor starts to release a pleasant smell. So you just kind of smell like flowers. And it's just like a fun little treat for the other players. Like, oh, you know, we're surrounded by death, but you smell really nice. Um, day two, whenever you bleed, um, it makes the other people smell nostalgia from their childhood. Mm. So they might want to start causing the player to bleed so that they can enjoy it more. Um, and on day three, the desire to taste the blood <laughs> from that player is really hard. It's a toughness DR that they have to try and defeat. Uh, and they may end up becoming addicted to drinking that player's blood. Um, but it also reduces all pain. So if the player wishes, they could start using it as something to sell to maybe local doctors or something. Uh, and it basically becomes like an opiate that uh, maybe they'll have a bunch of followers just following them on the trail just to get their daily dose of blood. And then I put some rules in there too on how they can kind of uh, get rid of the addiction. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And, <laughs> and and an ailment table on on the Morkwork player sheet is mm -hmm. really great. Like, I think that's a really nice addition to like, um, I was actually talking, we, we were playing Morkwork work last mm -hmm. night and um, we talked about poisons and that, you mm -hmm. know, there's several poisons listed in the core book and like, yeah, mm -hmm. poisons and resisting things is key to this game. Like they, there's a lot of it in all the different supplements. So I think mm -hmm. putting a spot on the character sheet for that sort of thing is, is excellent. Um, you also like, like, so, so would you describe, so Pilgrimage of the Penitent, it, it kind of feels to me a little bit like a Morkborg version of like the old. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress uh, story, right? Like, like the weirdest, yeah. twisted version. What sort of things? I you talked about having some random encounters, some things that you can mm -hmm. experience along the way. What sorts of things might the the Pilgrims uh, uh, come sure. across? Well, um, I, I got two d twenties here. I'll give them a roll. <laughs> sure. Uh, so I got a one and a twenty. That is insane. Okay, so uh, the one, um, I'll just scroll over to my uh, random weather. So this would just be kind of a, something that the GM could read to their players every morning to give them a sense of uh, what the day is like ahead of them. And for one, the day is as dull and the sun is elusive as ever. So nothing too exciting, but still kind of sets the mood there. And then the uh, 20 uh, for encounters is the ghost child. You awake to the unnerving sounds of a toddler giggling and running around your campsite. It is nude and carries a yellow flower in its hand, despite the land being barren and devoid of flora. So your players mm -hmm. have the option to watch the child or attempt to catch the child. So there's an agility DR there. Uh, you reach out and grab the child by the arm, but it somehow slips through your fingers in a cloud of dust. Before your eyes, the child dissolves into a pile of dust, leaving a shocked cry and lonely yellow flower in a pile of ash on the ground. Hmm. And that's it. <laughs> so it's just a fun little dramatic story thing to give to your players, uh, but no, uh, that one does have a little bit of a storyline association with it and other elements of the game. Um, but for the most part, these uh, morning random encounters I have just to kind of add atmosphere. And when I was putting this together, uh, for me, when I, gain, when I role play, I prefer all the uh, role-playing aspects, not so much the combat aspects. So this is a very combat light uh, supplement, mm. um, but I have lots of areas in the storyline uh, that make sense for random encounters in case the GM wanted to add some of their own. Cool. Awesome. So um, let's get into the product itself. Uh, kind of give it a little overview here. So we've already talked about this being a book. It's a hardcover yeah. book, um, gorgeous mm -hmm. um, hardcover book. Talk to us a little bit about what, like, like it's not just a book, though. There's a lot more mm -hmm. that you're offering on this, yeah. on this project. <laughs> so uh, when I was putting the storyline together, I inadvertently wrote over 10,000 words. So it is pretty big. <laughs> I kind of had to uh, rethink calling it a zine. 
Uh, so uh, it ended up being 80 pages, and I'm going with a hardcover presentation of it um, with the edges painted in black mm. um, and um, two millimeter thick cardboard pages. Um, sorry, um, <laughs> covers. I was like, good uh, lord. Full color. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, full color. So it's going to, I tried to make it as similar to the Mork uh core book as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's actually little bit more of a page count too if i'm not insane but i'd have to look yeah <laughs> yeah it's close um yeah and then so another thing i added to the campaign that i was really excited about from the beginning is all of the illustrations um because i have an illustration for every location every npc every item and every disease in the book uh so all of those illustrations i'm also having printed on oracle size cards that come in a small box and I figure uh, there's no text on them. It's just the illustration, a little tiny number in the corner to help the GM identify what cards are which. Uh, and this just becomes a player aid that the GM can hand out to their players, whether it's the disease or the NPC they're meeting or just something they want to use for their own storyline to have a, a player aid. Mm -hmm. And adding to that, one of the stretch goals I have in the campaign on Kickstarter is to have some guest writers, such as yourself, um, to uh, possibly come up with uh, additional miniature scenarios that might use some of those same uh, cards to kind of add to the usability and reusability of those player aids cards. Awesome, yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> so you've you 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 you've got these cards, you got the you got the uh, mm -hmm. book. You've kind of packaged all of that as an option on the yeah. page into a, a crazy mm -hmm. like blacked out box with yeah, some other yeah. goodies. Yeah, so it's. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I also I, every every project I do on Kickstarter, and this is my seventeenth one. I try to uh, create something I haven't created before. So for this one, I'm creating a collector's edition box. It is going to be uh, about an eight by ten ish uh, cardboard box that is completely black uh, with UV spot coating of the logo that represents the game. It's these two hands praying over a cross. Uh, within that is the game. There's also going to be a uh, vegan leather bound embossed uh, journal with uh, uh, dot matrixes on the pages. So you can mm. use that to design your own uh, kind of maps and stuff like that. Um, there's also that deck of cards uh, as well as the player sheets. It's going to be a pad of 50 peelable uh, uh, character sheets. Um, some aluminum bookmarks with the art from the game die sublimated onto them and some signed uh prints of the art too awesome, so, awesome. and an enamel pin and an enamel pin <laughs> yeah because you, you know a lot of pins and those are cool um yeah <laughs> so you got all that that's in the limited box um i also mm -hmm. you're wearing one of your prototype t-shirts I, I think the <laughs> yeah. final design is a little bit different but you got t-shirts yeah. made that have the uh, pilgrim on there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh kind of like as a as when i start putting this thing together uh, I was watching a lot of 70s Italian horror film, and I wanted to create a movie poster version of the adventure that looked like a 70s Italian horror film. Uh, and so I also got those printed at a local print shop that uses risograph printing, which is a mm -hmm. technique that was a lot more popular in the 60s and 70s. So I, I went over there, filmed a video of them producing them. It's up on my uh, TikTok page. And uh, so those movie posters are also available on the Kickstarter. They are uh, limited edition prints. Perfect. So you got the risograph poster print mm -hmm. limited edition you've also got the shirt with the same design on it yeah there are, yeah uh, the shirt options it's there. gonna be silk screen too yeah yeah mm -hmm. amazing um so holy smokes that's a lot of <laughs> stuff it's I'll, I'll be honest it's intimidating like there, there's so many little things that you've put together for this yeah. it feels like an experience and the thing that i like about this project um i think i've said this before in another morph mm -hmm. thing but like i i like finding morph work projects that are doing something very different at this point right like there's mm -hmm. there's literally hundreds of more work projects of uh, products out there right now yeah. and like a lot of them they're great and they they're covering ground that's useful but then there's all that like there's there's a small handful of projects that are actually like pushing out the boundaries of what's possible or what's what's been concepted for the game and people that are doing little different things and one of the, my favorite things is uh people who come in with an adventure or a supplement that isn't combat focused um mm -hmm. there's a couple of little like trifolds or, or rack cards things like that that have done it in the past several things but it, i'm always excited because one of the main questions that comes up with a morgue morgue thing is like how do i turn this into a campaign if everything's brutal everything's <laughs> deadly and the world's gonna end well 
one of the ways that you do that is you find yourself some supplements that have the Mork Borg aesthetic and the Mork Borg feel, but aren't focused on a combat every 10 minutes. And mm-hmm. so this is a, I feel like this is a great supplement that offers the experience of a campaign as you make your pilgrimage. Um, <laughs> but, and then, like you said, the GM can drop in all the encounters that they want in there to seed it, but um, gives the party a reason to exist in a long form fashion, which, which is cool. Yeah. And, and yeah. And, you know, if you read the Morkboard core bull, core book, it, it's not going to win any rewards for combat design. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be, it's going to win reward. Oh, sorry. It won awards for graphic design and setting design and product design. But, you know, the, the combat isn't what got me excited and got me flipping all the pages in there and right. reading everything from top to bottom. Yeah, perfect. Exactly right. Exactly <laughs> right. Okay. So um, that's what's in the book. That's what the book is. That's the inspiration. Um, when is the sucker launching? So um, the Kickstarter project is launching April 2nd, um, 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, I also set up a nice, simple link uh, that your listeners could uh, grab to come to it. Uh, So they could easily find it by going to bit.ly. So it's a short bit.ly link, bit.ly slash geeksmb for Morkborg, all lowercase, bit.ly slash geeksmb. Awesome. Uh, We'll put that in the show notes so everybody has an easy access point for it. Um, yeah, go give this a follow launching April 2nd. And yeah, Nick said he was kind enough to invite me to potentially write a stretch goal adventure for it. I'm looking very much to that forward to that. Um, I, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, 100% I'm down. So go give Nick a follow, uh, back his project and, uh, let me write an adventure. That'd be great. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me be on your show and talk about this. I'm I'm very excited about what I put together. Even if it doesn't, you know, go gangbusters. I know the product that I've made is something that I'm going to be staring at for years and being proud that I put that together. Perfect. And that's really what gets me going for the many Kickstarter projects I do. Because I know if I'm excited about it, someone else will be excited about it. Exactly right. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Nick. Um, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Zach.